Hey guys, it's the 28th of March 2019, just approaching, well actually we've just gone past 5pm GMT. Alright, so today we're going to talk about Bitcoin. Um, I'll briefly go through my long term count, but then the main focus will be on the short term count, looking at what price is doing uh, really over the last few days and what it's likely to do in the next upcoming weeks. That's what we'll really be analysing in today's video. On top of that, I will just run over another altcoin that I think is particularly interesting at this moment in time, which is Dash. So yeah, we will have a look at that later on after looking at Bitcoin. And on top of that, we'll have a look at the S&P 500, which is also very interesting at this moment in time, especially with the, the important economic catalyst, which is Brexit. Uh, as well as that, there's a few little things that I've been doing with regards to my... Um, my following, so uh, I've, I've opened up invites to a Discord group today. That is restricted to only people who have uh, bought my course because it's really there to help people uh, really practice what they've learned from the course and discuss with like-minded people about you know what they can expect in the charts. Uh, so yeah, it's a little group or community-based Discord that we've created there. But anyway, we'll stick to the analysis for now, so stay tuned. All right, guys, let's get started. So, um, yeah, my long term count for Bitcoin, I'm sure those of you that have been following my channel are fully aware that I've got this. Initially, we've got this WX. A y count with W being this three waves down. X wave is a descending triangle that's at A, B, C, D, E. And then we've had three waves down to form our, five, uh, our Y wave. However, I am expecting this all to be a W, X, Y, X, Z. So essentially, I expect this all to look very corrective, which so far so good. It is looking very corrective. And then I am expecting a rather impulsive looking leg down uh, to form a lower low. Um, that said, it's obviously debatable where we come up to with this X wave. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what we're going to discuss in, t uh, in today's video, really. So first of all, a few slight uh, changes to the color coding of these order blocks that you can see on the chart here. So this blue box is my daily order block. You can see It incorporates the red candles here, so you can't see it very well. Taking them off, you can see it's these red candles. These are the red candles that precede this dramatic price move upwards. That's why it's a significant order block. So anyway, the daily order block is now blue, and the weekly order block is uh, red. So the weekly order block, if we go on the weekly time frame. And basically, the weekly block is incorporating these two red candles, which again precedes the big dramatic price move up. So that's how we've demarcated these order blocks. So just explain that because we will refer to these order blocks later in the video. Uh, all right. So as I say, it's all looking very, very corrective at present. Yeah, you can see this dramatic move down, sideways price action, dramatic move down, sideways price action. Now, essentially, sideways price action will eventually result in a impulsive move out. Now, I do have a bias towards it going to the downside just because I do expect it to be a WXYXZ um, because the alternative scenario is that this is the bottom and if it were to be the bottom, you would expect a lot more volume to come in. Um, a lot more volume. So you, you'd expect more volume at the bottom than there is at the end of this initial W wave, for example. And you can see here, there's a lot more volume on the W wave. So that doesn't really make sense uh, if this were to be the bottom. And that said, usually there's a lot more hysteria around um, the assets when you know it's forming a top or a bottom. And I think we, we are due to see a lot more hysteria within Bitcoin. Um, before we can say that the bottom is in. 
So that's where my bias is, but that's obviously a bias. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm right about that. This could certainly be the bottom, it's possible. <coughs> but at the moment, I would be expecting another leg down. Okay, so just, again, this is the pitchfork. So you can see these lines sloping downwards here. The way that's been drawn, so we using the first two waves, so you plot the first point of your pitchfork at the start of the first wave, second pivot at the end of the first wave, third pivot at the end of the second wave. Yeah, this was that X wave which finished here. And then we're using a shift pitchfork and you get these lines drawn. Shift pitchforks are often used for corrective patterns and you can see that price has adhered to the lines rather nicely. So you can see it started, price dramatically dropped down, started to stall a little bit at this median line, which is always a very significant line. And then we've come with sideways price action up, up to this uh, upper median line. Just clean the chart up a little bit. So we're at the upper median line here. Now there is the possibility, there's no reason to suggest that we're suddenly going to see some um, impulsive price action right away. This could all go sideways up until perhaps we even hit this upper warning line. And you can see this is even uh, mid-June. You know, there's nothing to say that that can't happen. Um, we could easily see sideways price action hit the upper warning line and that would set up a, a really fantastic short position if that were to occur. Um, so that's one way it could potentially play out. Um, all right, let's zoom in now, just so we can have a closer look at price action here. Um, so let's go in on the four hourly. All right, so this is where we came down to around 3200, where the Y wave, major Y wave finished. Then we saw essentially this rather impulsive looking leg up. And since then we've seen very corrective looking price action. Um, so the way I was looking at it was that it would be a WXY, this, this second X wave that we're, we're currently in following this Y wave. So I was expecting this to be like a, a W, X, and then Y wave. I was thinking it's going to be a three wave pattern itself. So that's going to be a first wave, second wave, and our third wave is still, you know, in progress. So that's the way I was looking at it at present. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, so far, so if this is our Y wave of our um, X wave, so we've had, it looks like seven legs up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when you see seven legs, always think double zigzag. So that's two, three wave patterns joined by an X wave, yeah, to make seven waves. So yeah, so it's looking very, very corrective. And then three legs down again, corrective, and then you expect another corrective pattern to come even higher. Now, what have we seen so far? So we've seen quite converging looking price action here. Uh, yes, we saw a wick down here, which kind of deviated out of this converging price action. Uh, and if we were to include the wick, then it looks more like a channel, to be honest. I, mean, I suppose we are still within that channel with price action here bouncing off that channel. Um, but yeah, I would probably describe this as looking like a WXYXZ. So basically what we're seeing here in Bitcoin is multiple, multiple corrective patterns joined together. It's very, very complex, which basically means that the market makers aren't really in any hurry to drive price uh, anywhere at, pr at present. And they're probably just loading up on positions. And we're, we're, our job is trying to determine whether those are long positions or short positions. Um, now, yeah, the, my count for this would probably, there's two ways of counting it. It could be a, um, you could call it W, X, Y, X, Z. Then we see an X wave, and then we're gonna see another correction wave higher. Or alternatively, we could call that W. So that's our first three waves up, W, X, Y, so three waves up, and then this is our second X, and we're now just gonna form the Z wave. 
which potentially could be you know a rather strong move up possibly or it may just come up to here uh, which is the top of our uh, daily order block uh, in terms of where price came down to here so this was a significant level and the reason for that was well first of all it corrected I think it was 50% from the bottom of the price action this wave up so it came down hit the 50 here so that was significant and on top of that I believe it hit the 50% level of our daily order block so this is the bottom of our daily order block this is the top and again the 50 so lots of confluence here it's hit the 50% level of the order block as well as the 50% level of this previous um, swing from a low level here to the high we trace 50% so and in doing so since bouncing off this level it's actually breached this uh, pitchfork upper median line which is a to some extent a show of strength here now obviously there are some key levels that we need to break and I have been saying for some time for me to go long I wouldn't be looking for longs at this moment because we could easily collapse off this the top of this order block which means the risk reward for any trade is pretty slim so for me, what I'm waiting for is price to break above this daily order block, probably retest, and then I believe there's a trade through to around 43.80. The reason I've drawn this black dotted line is uh, it was going off this price action here, this high. Um, let's go in on the, just expand it a little bit. So there's these highs, but also I think it's when we include all of this data from twenty from twenty seventeen also, and then we put on our volume at price. Just expand it a little bit so we can see it more clearly. Yeah, this was the reason we plotted the, this dotted line now. Um, so you can see there's quite a dramatic drop in volume here from between this bar and this bar. When you see that dramatic drop in volume, <coughs> it generally means that price bounced off this level. So when it hits this level, it bounces off. And you can see here, going back to 2017, bounced off it here, bounced off it here, a little bounce and then actually broke out. Um, but generally when prices hit here it's always offered some level of resistance or support so it came down here went up a little bit then broke through then it acted as resistance so I think it would be very reasonable to think that if price did get up to here it's going to pull back before it goes if it, if it is to go any higher it's going to pull back before it does so so that's the reason that I would be the trade that I would be looking for is to break this daily order block because I could consider this to be a significant resistance level and then a retest of the daily order block uh, before going further higher to around 4300 4, so that's one trade I'm looking out for it's not easy looking for trades to be honest in this um, because it's all very very corrective and as I say it could be corrective for a few more months potentially um, so it's never easy conditions to trade in unless you're a day trader and you're in and out you know within minutes uh, within the hour um, then certainly there may still be good trading opportunities but for those people who are swing traders it's not ideal conditions at present um, okay let's take the volume off a moment so yeah and if we just do some Elliott Wave Fibonacci uh, extensions so so from here to here that's our W X comes down to here So the one-to-one -one is roughly at this dotted line. So where what does that come to? The one-to-one -one comes to 44.35. Um, but of course, it could come higher. It could come to the 1.236, for example, which is almost giving confluence with the top of the weekly order block. Certainly, when we reach the top of the weekly order block, that does offer a good shorting opportunity, and that's at 4,600 there. So that's another important level, 4,600. Um, so yeah, this is how I'm 
expecting price to play out. I do expect it to make higher highs than you know this high here and this high here. Um, but it may not happen so soon. As I say, in order to potentially trade it, I'd be looking for a break, a retest, and then I'd be looking for a short-term trade up to here. But uh, if that's not playing out, then I, 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 I you know, I just won't trade it. Uh, I won't um, be too upset about it because it's not something that looks uh, so fantastic to me. I'm just looking at potential ways that it could be traded. Um, but certainly, as I say, eventually there'll be another wave down, which I mean, that's what I'm expecting. And in terms of good shorting opportunities, top of the weekly order block will be a wonderful opportunity. And this upper warning line is another fantastic opportunity. Um, yeah, so uh, that's pretty much it for Bitcoin that I wanted to mention in, in this video. Um, so as I say, we'll just move on to Dash, which, as I say, that's the altcoin that I think is looking particularly interesting at present. Um, all right, so let's find Dash. All right, let's zoom out first of all. All right, so all looking very messy here, but I'm going to explain everything to you. So let's take off everything first of all. All right, so what have we got? We've got a rather aggressive looking move up here, and then we've got uh, lots of sideways price action. Now, if you look closely, <coughs> you can probably make out five waves of this consolidation here. So it looks like a one wave, two waves, three waves, four waves, five waves. Um, so when you count five waves in a consolidation, think triangle. Yeah. So first of all, we've got quite a flat looking top here. And then the bottoms are ascending. So you describe this as an ascending triangle. Uh, and you can see the way I plotted it is A, B, C, D and E. Um, and then obviously from here, we've then seen again, a nice impulsive, uh, move upwards. Now what's happened since then we've come back down and we've gone back into this range here. So we've, we've overlapped. So that basically means this cannot be, it can't be labeled as a one, two, three, four, five. Reason being is because wave four would have overlapped with wave one. Um, the alternative, potentially you could argue that that's okay if it's a diagonal where wave four can overlap with wave one, uh, but it's not looking too, so much like a converging diagonal to me. <coughs> so then the other way of looking at it is it, if it's a big one, two, one, two. So that means that this is one, two, and then we're, we're still in wave three, essentially. So this is wave one and two of wave three. Three. So basically wave three is not finished and we're going to see a three, four, five of wave three before we then see of a larger degree the wave four and five to finish off the total wave count. Um, so just putting on the labels again here. So this all looks distorted for some reason. Uh, got a log chart. No, that's all fine. Okay. So yeah, once you've got your first two waves in, you can plot a pitchfork. So bottom of the pitchfork is here, the start of the first wave. End of the first wave marks the second pivot. End of the second wave marks the third pivot. And then I've drawn here, this is a modified shift pitchfork. And you can see quite nicely following this, um, these pivots, we came up really nicely to the median line, found resistance, went sideways, and tested the lower median line twice very nicely here. On the third occasion, we broke through, retested, and then we've made our way down to the lower median line and kind of flirted with that lower median line a little bit. Sorry, sorry, this is a, a different pitchfork. So, so we, yeah, we broke this lower median line and since then we've then just progressed, propagated down to this, um, lower warning line here. And you can see here, price is starting to curve. So if you were to put your RSI, MACD, your oscillated, oscillator, um, oscillators on, then you would see divergence here, just because of that curving out and loss of momentum in price action. It's very visible to the naked eye. You don't really need an indicator to tell you that. And 
I believe that this lower warning line could certainly be an explanation for that, as well as this big block, which I'll explain as well, that is a, a monthly order block right there. So the reason I've got another pitchfork here, which again is a modified shift pitchfork, is because it's to look at this price action here. So we've got, it's essentially a WXY with this being W, so it's three waves down to make W. X is then this three waves up to here, which looks a bit like a regular flat. And then the Y wave has come down. And again, it's as I say, it's, it's come down to this lower median line. And then we've got this confluence of pitchforks, which looks like is the point where price is starting to turn up. And as I say, this block is very significant. If we go on the monthly chart, and really with the, the order blocks, what you want to incorporate is the, the bodies of the candles. It's mainly, and so I've tried to incorporate these red candles here. This is what the order block was really looking at. Um, so I've marked out those, that's the top of the order block, that's the bottom. And you can see that this block acted as a very nice support down here. So they're the reasons why I believe we may have found a temporary, you know, bottom here. That's not to say price can't come down further. As I say, with Bitcoin, for example, I am expecting a lower low, which will have an impact on other altcoins. And certainly we could come down lower in uh, in Dash. Um, <clears throat> that said, it doesn't have to be the case. Dash uh, may make a, a higher low whilst Bitcoin makes a lower low. So it all depends on what happens here. If we see a dramatic move up, then certainly it may just make a, a higher low whilst Bitcoin makes a lower low. Um, or if it just fails to make a significant move up, then it could certainly make a lower low. But um, yeah, just zooming in now, it's going on, on the daily. You can see we're still very close to this lower warning line. And this is something that I would be happy to use as a, as a level for a stop. So I probably want it below this consolidation here. And I'd also want it below the, the warning line. And um, yeah, I think there may be a short term pop in Dash. In terms of where it can come up to, I'd certainly be looking at least for a move up to the this pitchfork median line here. That would be a resistance level. <coughs> However, it could pop more significantly, potentially. So I probably wouldn't take off my whole position here, but I'd take off uh, a good amount depending on the wave count. So I'd have to be tracking the price action to determine how much I'd take off. But um, yeah, Dash is certainly one I'm keeping my eyes closely uh, close on at, uh, at present, just because I like the, the look of this setup. Um, all right. Yeah, so as I also mentioned, we'll have a look at the S&P. So let's have a look at the S&P. Um, All right, first of all, let's go on the weekly. Now, this is following our uh, 2008 recession. Big regular flat here, dramatic price move. I did count five waves up. Now, there's plenty of ways you can count Elliott wave counts. This is one potential count, <coughs> with this being wave one. A running flat A, A, B, C to make two, three up to here, and then we've got a wave four. And then our final five way, uh, fifth wave up to here. Um, but that said, obviously, there's, there's multiple ways you can count the yellow wave count. So this could all be part of a major wave three. This could be a wave four, and we could have another way to move up. That's possible, certainly possible. There's multiple ways of counting the Elliott wave. Um, and you can see here, we, we bounced off the, the lower warning line very nicely. Uh, so that acted as excellent uh, support. But on top of that, if we look at the simple moving averages, so on the weekly chart, you can see the 200 week moving average as a very significant support. Um, since then, just have a look. This is quite interesting. For These are the, the most significant moving averages, I believe, are the 200, the 100, which is the red line. The green lines are 20 and the blue lines are 50. So <clears throat> after testing the 200, People obviously, you know, put on some big orders here. Price moved very dramatically up. And then the next bit of a pullback was really here. And what happened? We tested the 100. So people, you know, loaded up on positions again off the 100-day moving average. Then what did we do? 
we came above the 20 day moving average and what happened a bit of a pullback only as far as the 20 day moving average before price then dramatically moved up again what's happened now we've come down we've tested the 50 day moving average okay it did breach too but didn't close below and again we've had a, a bit of a move up yeah so clearly these are significant moving averages to use the 200 the 100 the 50 and the 20 and people use all sorts of numbers uh, the, and they're using the EMAs the SMAs they're using the Fibonacci numbers <coughs> personally speaking I like to just use these simple moving averages uh, especially on the stock indices on the longer time frames so daily and weekly uh, I really like using these the 100 the 200 the 50 and the 20 uh, so I generally stick to those uh, and so what yeah so basically we've come up to this um, lower median line found a bit of resistance on top of that um, we have retraced I believe it's 78.6 percent of this move down we've retraced about 78.6 percent so let's just show that so there you go 78.6 Struggle to really close above that for long. And we've seen a, a weekly shooting star candle here. Now we're seeing a bit of a, a spinning top type candle. So a bit of a, a um, pause in the market. And we'll find out whether that's a, a continuation pattern, in which case price will go higher, or whether it's going to come down lower. But um, yeah, my opinion is that we are going to come down a bit lower first. This black box here, this is a monthly order block. So if we go on our monthly chart, basically what that is marking out is you see this green candle here, the body of that candle. So basically price came down, consolidated. This is the green candle, that consolidation. I've marked out the body of that candle, drawn it across. And you can see here, as well as finding support of the 20 month moving average here, well, then we found a bit of support off this monthly order block so that's just explaining that one but yeah I do think we could well come down a bit further uh, with this uh, the S&P uh, but and then we'll have to see uh, it will a lot of it will determine on some you know major catalysts Brexit being one of them um, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with Brexit uh, I know fundamentals shouldn't really influence your opinions when trading uh, especially if you're sticking to your technical analysis, but it's very important to, to determine basically these big catalysts, they determine major trends. So a major trend will often start off these big, um, big catalysts. So you can't ignore them. Although you can stick to technical analysis, you can't ignore these big catalysts. Um, on top of that, Apple is one, you know, one, um asset that really moves the the stock market so and uh just going on the daily i was looking at this as a potential wxy and basically there was some relatively big news that came out for apple around this time so it, it had that uh, apple event where they were discussing the new services for for Apple, so they came out with the, uh, the Apple credit card. They talked about uh, Apple TV Plus, Apple News Plus, and they made a big deal about it, but it didn't really achieve much. Uh, price kind of went down a little bit, not too much. And we're yet to see is that just a pause? Is price going to go higher? But um, there is this pitchfork that I had drawn um, with these using these two waves here. We, we hit our upper warning line. And we actually broke out the lower warning line here, but, and then we've come up and retested it. And uh, on the daily also, you can see we're testing the 200 day moving average. Uh, and then there's this gap here, this 20, 30th of July, roughly this gap here. So we kind of tested that level as well. So plenty of reasons for resistance at this level. So if you were going to go long on Apple, for example, you would want to see this high broken and then you want to see a retest of probably this 0.618 level before looking for further longs or even maybe this um, lower warning line. But I think there's some key fundamental data yet to come out. So in particular, Brexit, we should be closely following what's going to happen there because, you know, it, it, 
could cause a lot of problems for the general economy. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much what I'd like to update you guys with from a technical analysis point of view today. Um, so we looked at Bitcoin, we looked at Dash, we looked at the S&P, we looked at Apple. Um, yeah, what I wanted to mention uh, was that I have created that new Discord group. So it's open to those of you who have um, bought into the, the course that I have. And the reason that it's restricted to those people is because I want people using the Discord to use the same... Um, the same settings that I use and the same strategy that I use and the idea is that we're all thinking the same way because we've all done the same course uh, and we can look out for you know potential opportunities together that's the idea about it uh, and at the same time hopefully that will help people to learn I want to encourage people no matter what stage they're at to try and you know share what they've learned so we can you know give feedback and try and get people to the same level that's the idea behind it and because I've just done opened up this Discord today, I have put a new 50% uh, discount on the course. So that will be available. I'll put that in the description of the video. Uh, and the only additional feature is I'm going to have a few spots available each month. So it's going to be like a limited offer each month. And that's, again, the 50% discount on the course. So basically, if you're quick to act, you'll be able to take advantage of that. Uh, as I say, it's just for a few places each month. Um, just to st slowly keep growing the Discord, get more members on board and hopefully create a, a larger community. Um, but already there's a very good community that we've got. So um, yeah, it's going to be an exciting venture. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot to fo look forward to. All right, guys, I think we'll wrap it up. So if you've enjoyed today's content, please leave a like. And uh, yeah, please leave any comments, any queries, anything you want to discuss about the charts today. Uh, please yeah, leave your comments. I'll try and get back to you. Um, but I will be focusing on my emails for the, the short term just because uh, obviously there's a lot of people signing up to the, this uh, Discord that I need to get back to. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, take care.